Hello and welcome to this special podcast presentation of the post-mortem of Hell Weekend, what it was a few days ago for the Terry Campisi Foundation. I'm Raider Nick, Acker, member of the Red Team, and I'm joined by two further recruits, the man they call Bucking Buckley, Mr. Jimmy Buckley, and the, the girl they call Smiley these days. <laughs> How are, are we? How are we, champions? Oh, not too bad, mate. Still, uh, still in recovery mode, I think, to be perfectly honest. Feeling pretty exhausted, probably fair to say. How are you travelling, Nicole? Yeah, look, you know, uh, very fatigued. It's three days past and I'm still feeling the yells from Picker, so... <laughs> Firstly, Bucko, mate, uh, you said you're, you're struggling after a couple of days, mate. Yesterday we went out to lunch and we dead set bought shares in pizza in Queenie, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had plenty of pizza. We, we've certainly uh, put the carbs back in, I think, over <laughs> mate, the last I've few on, days. I've been on the drink since Sunday and I don't even drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of feel. Well, it's like we said, it, it feels like we've won a premiership. It together. does. Yeah. Yeah. Which is quite an amazing feeling, actually. Um, yeah, there was, there was a big release, I think, on Sunday afternoon. Uh, the moment they told us we were done and then in the subsequent hours, um, just as it all kind of melted in and, and washed over us, uh, we packed a fair bit into a short amount of time, hence I think the reason why we're all feeling a bit <laughs> fried this week. Well, having said that, it's it's accelerated growth to go to go a little bit deeper there behind the curtain and um, and I researched it by talking to some of the staff and they said, mate, that's really good mm. because what we've done is... Throughout the 30 hours, we delved into new territory we've never been before because we pushed ourselves so hard. And then what comes with that is a release. The old stuff has to go for the new stuff to come in. So we're all going to be emotional. And that's a really good healing mechanism because once all that emotionality clears, you're going to be left with that change, which is that shift of a person, which, aka going out and finding yourself out in the jungle, yeah, Nicole. Absolutely. Well, I've actually found it quite hard to... Um, put and my experience into words. A lot of mm. people have asked me in the past couple of days, well, how was it? And you try and explain it and you just can't actually explain what we went through. So, yeah. um, and everyone's like, oh, it doesn't seem that hard or, oh, yeah. And you're just like, no, I need my recruits back here for some shared experience. 100%. So it's, it's, there's an element you don't want to, it's like so sacred that we mm. shared together. I don't want to kind of like diarrhea all over it by telling everyone that yeah. wasn't there. Mm. Uh, we'll talk about it here though. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if, if we can. Yeah. Before we call the PDI, Bucky, uh, what was probably one of the toughest parts of the course for yourself? Oh, gee whiz. It's, it is hard to pinpoint something because there was very little time to rest throughout the 30 Did you ever get to a point where you were, you know, got to the point where you thought, gee, I could be gone here? Well, no. So just to explain, I guess, to, to those that didn't do it at the start, we, we were given a, a waiver. Uh, to sign, and then we were given a slip, a withdrawal form, which we all filled out, barring a signature. And, and if you wanted to pull out of the challenge at any time during the 30 hours, it was a matter of pulling your folded slip out of your uh, Ziploc waterproof <laughs> bag, which was uh, no, part couple, of the detail. Couple, couple didn't follow <laughs> orders either. Yeah, and then uh, signing it away with the pen, giving it to one of the staff, and you would have been helicoptered out, presumably. Yeah. Mm. Um, to answer your question, Nick, I did not at one point consider pulling that slip out, uh, but I did have a couple of moments where I was starting <laughs> to question life decisions and think, oh, she's, this is probably going get, to get a bit harder before it gets mm. better. And, you know, really had to kind of dig into that, that deeper layer of yourself and, and find something extra, which I suspect we all did feel like that. And, um, I think we all did manage to find something extra in that uh, in that moment, but tough, mate. Mate, it's it's honestly hard to single out a, a tough a tough moment. And I think that because it probably come, wasn't. Hmm. I think it comes from um, obviously each task was hard in its own right, mm. but we're so fatigued from that one beforehand that it makes the next one challenging in a different way, more like emotionally challenging or mentally challenging. Yeah. Like I walked through a blackberry vine. And it caught my arm and I cried. <laughs> and you wouldn't expect me to usually do that. I mean, maybe I would in everyday life. But I mean, like, it's just these little things that would affect you where they wouldn't usually. Or like, I got to whitewater rafting. I'm not really scared of water or anything, but I was just like really scared and like, whatever. Mm. I don't know. But 
Yeah, I think I think for me personally, the toughest probably the toughest the toughest one was uh, the toughest one. There's the boss now. <laughs> I, think the, I think the toughest thing we had to do was probably the first one with the stretcher, but that was probably a calculated move as well because that got us got us really off our chair and got us really hardened for the rest of the day. And once we got our head head and arms around that, literally and hypothetically. It put us in good stead uh, mm. for what we had to do. So speaking of, uh, we can continue, and I'll give uh, the, the big PDI a call. Um, he's raring to go, the big fella, the chief, the physical trainer instructor. I had a good chat to him today and um, loves a chat. Hi. You there, mate? <laughs> How are you? I'm good, mate. How's it? How you doing? Yeah, good, mate. How are you? I'm yeah, really good, mate. Cool. Uh, you've just sent a bit of shivers down some spines. The other two guys you joined here by raiding here. You've got Smiley and you've got Bucko. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to hear this laugh from a mile away. <laughs> bit, bit of Rudyard kibbling, eh, Laura's jungle, I think. Yeah. And all of a sudden, when you answer the phone, everyone just straightened up there, boss. <laughs> yeah, well, I was waiting. And I was just making sure because I only had one bar on my phone. So I'm thinking, hoping this thing's I'm trying to manoeuvre it around so I've got the most bars I can first and... We'll stay there, Chief. You sound good. Uh, we'll roll off some questions to you if, if you don't mind. Uh, first on my question here from Raider Nick, mate. What what was your what's your kind of post mortem outcome? I mean, you rock up to a group with all shapes and sizes, uh, different kinds of fitness levels, quite eclectic bunch of personalities coming out of Sunday afternoon. Uh, what's your kind of assessment on us all, mate? It's good. Like um, to be honest, and I said, you know, to all our the directing staff and all the okay, well, you know. Just good people in general. Like anyone who gives up their time to raise money, for such good cause. You know, I've got great, you know, great character to start with. Um, just people's humility, to be honest. And um, everyone was pretty stoic the whole way through it. Like you know, we put you through your paces, and uh, the rain didn't help. It's almost, uh, you know, like uh, torrential rain come down, made it even a bit more difficult. But everyone hung on there, and just getting around, actually getting to actually personally know people and their own stories. There's some actually some great. Amazing stories there, and um, kudos to everyone who had a crack. So, you know, I saw growth in that 30 odd hours from you know the, the first candidates I saw when I walked out there to at the end there. Um, you know, and watching them still hold that bar out at the front at you know 90 degree. I tell you what, I tell you what, there, Chief. I had a banana on the way to the Campo's place, and I was holding that back in that first uh, little bit of a screening session you did in the car park. And I thought, if I dead set spew here, I'll be in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> You're all over. That'd be a great start. Adrian, it's Bucko, yeah. mate. Thanks very much again for what you guys did for us out there. That was incredible. I, I, I wanted to ask about that initial hour. You had a bunch of, of yeah. ragtags come together who had never been in the military before, and within about an hour, you would completely whip this into line to the point of almost perfect discipline, maybe not quite getting yeah. our timings at that hour, but but you had us very, very quick, smart in the piece. Can you just talk to us a bit about the process and how you were able to do that? So essentially, you know, um, you know, everyone came in, they formed up, you know, 0700, so obviously we had to really set the scene, and unfortunately, it was sort of my job to play probably the bad man of the course, so... Yeah, they run these selection courses. They have, like, obviously a lot of support staff assisting, and then you have your directing staff, and you have your technical proficiency. So in this case, we're fortunate to have some really good DS, you know, particularly from the two commander regiment, you know, away from the FASR. Um, and I was the, the PDI for this actual event, you know, so the physical training instructor. But part of it is we've got to go out and set the scene. Um, and the way to do that is just introduce yourself, and straight away you'll address me as staff so that you set the scene. Um, and then introduce simple precautionary and executive words of command. So precautionary word of command is something I want you to do. Executive short, sharp. So gets rid of all the waffling. Uh, gets really simple, you know, ranks and files. Gets some order. Um, I did conduct a warm-up because, you know, I'm tribute to the people come from all walks of life. I just wanted to get a gauge of their physical uh, demeanour so I could tailor the next 30 hours, essentially, of what I saw in that car park. And... Uh, as you know, I've got you doing some eight count push ups, burpees. I actually had a look at the way people squat. Yeah, you know, like. A few corrections there, boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah simple as, you know, walking change, directions change. Have a look at, you know, how switched on they are cognitively to see if they listen to what I've got to say. Uh, push ups, um, you know, and the push ups aren't just doing random push ups, you know, they're more command. And I, but, you know, I did every rep, every punishment, everything with them. It's funny, like, I don't really watch that 
guess that's Australia thing on TV with Ant Middleton and you know, a bit of reality. But yeah, I watched it funnily enough yesterday afternoon when it was on, and I seen them in there, you know, the, the Pommy fellows, you know, beasting, giving them a beasting, some of these celebrity stars. And the ironic thing is, not one, not one of those DS was actually doing the punishments or the repetitions with the, uh, mm. the candidate, which you know is, is not really good kudos. I want to know the repetitions of what I'm dishing out. I can actually do myself. Well, I distinctly um, remember in the warm up when we were doing push ups and you held one of the push ups for like what felt like 58 seconds. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I was yeah, like, that's just, um, <laughs> Was that a punishment? Where, yeah, that was just something to look at. It was. It actually was a screening process. Right. Yeah, well, it was. It was a screening process. We're walking around. I don't know if you remember what Larry walked around as well. You know, get your, get your knees off the ground. You know, so it's just looking at what we're working with and. Uh, just set the scene straight up, so it humbles people. So we talked a lot about humility, and the good thing is, you know, it puts everyone back onto a level peg. You know, I don't know if you remember, I changed out the torsion bars, so females, males. So it was all compared relative to everyone's sort of weight. So we're all on a, on an equal peg. Mm. Did and you say, did you say torture eight. bars or torsion bars? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, mate. What <laughs> pain I was going to call them, but uh, yeah, yeah, torture bars. Um, but you know, they did well, like. They were eight kilo bars for males and, you know, six kilo bars for females. So, you can know, I, a lot of weight. Can I yeah. ask, you know how you say change in a very, yep. um, like... Calculated way. Calculated way. Can you yeah. firstly say it now so I can relive some of the weekend again? She wants it for a ringtone, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and you know yourself, it's part of the intro, mate, that I sent to you earlier. <laughs> And, and gave me the thumbs up yeah, for well, so. I heard that that had that, that uh, yeah the Rudyard Kipling Law of the Jungle in it the strength of the wolf into the pack and the yeah, <laughs> you did well with that um, yeah and uh, also yeah, can you explain why you do that um, why you say it like that as well yeah so essentially in the military you know they words command the big thing so we, they work in a C two environment you know command and control you actually call it C three with communication as well so they're really big on it so words command short, you know, as I talk about brevity, you know, like, so one of the commands I have is, is precautionary is where you, you waffle more about what you want someone to do, but the executive words command me need to be short, sharp, and um, and it seems to be something that, that PDI has took on as its own sort of language, and um, and that's that change, you know, like, so exercise, change. So if I want you to do something really quick, so, you know, torsion bar held in this position, position ready. Yeah, with me begin, so we do the exercise, and then I say, you know, teams, change. So, yeah, just breaks up the ice, probably uses that, you know, nuances, you know, uh, you've probably heard of RSVP, rhythm, speed, volume, pitch, that sort of mm. stuff. It just... It, it just, sounds more it's important just, when you say it like that. Yeah. It really it sounds does, more important. It, it does, and it, uh, yeah, and it, 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 it clearly works. It's been, it's been within the, you know, the work in, in the profession of arms for a long, long time, and that it, it comes from a long, you know, I, I, I don't know where it probably originated, and it's probably like its own language, but it's certainly something that we use, um, but it's funny, I once ran a course once, and uh, won some activities, and they actually bought me a whistle, and they put change on it, like a whistle, <laughs> one, actually, <laughs> well, that was my... My gift, you know, my fit, yeah. Well, perfect perfect segue there. Speaking of the uh, change, um, a lot of us there, boss, have come out of that, that jungle with some changes. And uh, we spoke about just before we went on air here, and a lot of us are feeling a little emotional yep. being released during the week. That's obviously part of the psychological part of uh, change that's going on. How does one of us, how, do, uh, how does us recruits now land these changes now so we bounce back into our life uh, really you know capitalizing on what we achieved out there in the jungle in, in hell weekend with you guys well you know you saw how much growth you had in that 30 hours and it just shows what humans actually are capable of so things like um you know like everyone got to see their own character like mm. their own character flaws as well because you know, we're not all perfect we understand people have different strengths and weaknesses but the reality is if you can capitalize on that and understand that, you know, you've been humbled and whatnot, but you've, you've got, you know, you've got that physical mindset, you know, and the psychological mindset to stay in the fight, as you were to the end, that you're, you're actually capable of carrying it on. So, oh, yeah, I just believe in just that relentless pursuit of excellence. So, in whatever trade you're in, 
at the end of the day, there's no reason why it should not be relentless as in pursuing excellence. And you understand, like, it doesn't matter what trade or craft you're in or, you know, just trying to get mastery in your own in your own world. So whether you're a tradie, whether you're a CEO of a company or whatnot, what actually is professional mastery of that trade? And and one thing about the profession of arms, one good thing that I probably underestimated, but after doing 20-odd years, in the military and, and surrounding yourself with really good people and, and people of really good character. Um, you start learning these sort of things and that's helped me move into my next career in life, which has set me up to success. And that, and I think that's just that relentless, relentless uh, pursuit of excellence. Well, right. mate, mate that, those tools that you gave us, they're absolutely life-changing that will, uh, will bounce into our life. AP, thanks for joining us, mate. It's been a pleasure yeah. talking thanks, to you. We'll, we'll definitely talk Great, again yeah. one day. We'll talk on Friday at the ball. Uh, we'll, we we'll, will. We we'll, will. We'll, we'll plant a chair yeah. right next to you. We won't move for sure, a couple yeah. of hours. <laughs> yeah, 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 strap in. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. And uh, thanks, thanks again to you um, for, what, for, for the fact that you, you raise all those money and you actually come out to do that event. So we learn as much from you as hopefully you learn from us, fellas. So, um, we actually appreciate it, and there's a lot of gratitude there. Um, and I think you got that sincerely from from the directing staff. Like we're actually blown away. Actually, great people. So yeah, it was such good cause, and um, well done to everyone. Thanks, AP. You're making us all tear up again. Thank you, mate. Thank you. All tears on uh, Friday, Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We'll have a couple of beers. See ya. Yeah. Yeah. See ya, AP. See ya. See ya. Catch you, mate. Later. What a legend. I reckon. Mate, what when, a he, legend. when he walked out, it was like. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Obviously, as we saw the human element of these guys, once the activities rolled on, the abseiling and the kayaking, we thought, wow, these guys are just fantastic mm. blokes, aren't they? One thing I will say is that they they had our respect instantly. 100%. There was no, and sorry, I don't know if we're allowed to swear on this or anything like Go that. Go for it. But there was no bullshit about them. Nah. You knew that they were legit from the start. That's they what's so refreshing about these guys. Yeah. Like we had, I mean, some of, the, some of the best special forces soldiers that have served this country, and we had them you know, looking after us and commanding us. And you could tell that from the start, mm. you know. There I mean, was they no, were, yeah. they used the three Fs, right? Yeah. Frank, fearless and factual. There was many, many acronyms. What about fearful, the, uh, they were fearful. <laughs> what about the five Vs? What about the five Vs in the mole? <laughs> I won't say what the five Vs were. <laughs> Did anyone get to the point where they went in their minds, maybe considering late in the piece when it was piss and rain and um, soaking wet and it was like a Saturday night, you're thinking, gee whiz, there could be someone else here. Did anyone, did anyone yeah. go there? I think we all went there at some stage. <laughs> Poor old Tips went there, didn't he? <laughs> Nearly went somewhere else as well, on your Tipper. <laughs> can I can I ask Nicole? I want to pick you up on that point mm. because this is something that we all experienced through the thirty hours. That we we had, I guess, many breakdowns, and mm. I think everyone probably had some form of this mm. over the course, if not multiple forms. How did you go about getting through those and managing that? Well, it was kind of just a mini implosion. And then I just might have shed one tear. And mm. then, well, I mean, they're not going to leave you there. So you just got to get on with it, right? Mm. So, um, but my team was really supportive and you just keep going. I can cry and walk. It's not that difficult. Mm. But we sat there and, and stood in that rain. And then we got so used to that rain. And, and then that night, we, you know, we, uh, we stripped off in our undies. We warmed up our clothes and it became a party. Mm. And the only liquid there was the rain coming from the sky. Yeah. So to paint that picture for, for the people that weren't there, um, it, it was pretty persistent heavy rain on the Saturday. Dogs. Cats, cats and, dogs. and dogs. And we were soaking wet. Not, not a dry item of clothing. We'd set up our, our primitive little bedding arrangements for the night, which was just a tarp and a bit of rope. And we each had uh, a sleeping mat. It was about a metre long. And we each mm. had uh, our sleeping bags. And, Mine was floating. And that was it. Yeah, and, and a lot of people ended up completely flooded in. So their options were... Sit around the fire in the belting rain or go and sit under their little tarp uh, in, in and lie in their wet, sleep, wet sleeping bag in a puddle. These were the options. And like you say, th- there was a, an incredible camaraderie, I think, that came out around that fire. We, we, were, we were stood around it. We started to get some gear off. Mm. And by the way, this is either side of an 11 p.m. Uh, call to order where we had another another couple another of hours task, of tasks to do. Thrown upon us. Um, but... Like you say, that was that was a galvanising moment, I think, yeah. for a lot of the group to get us through that night and, and to effectively break the back of the challenge. And I find it difficult to explain that to people um, that, that they weren't there. You know? and, and in conversations with the with the staff the next day, they were expecting to rock up on Sunday 
with us in the fetal position, mm. a couple of, you know, some dysfunction amongst the group, some disharmony. But they rocked out. We had smiles on our faces because mm. of that night. And the fire was still going. The fire was still going. We, we managed to get that going. Which, some huge efforts from, from some individuals there. And um, it was just, and then in speaking as well, in summary with some of the DSs, they were saying that's what we do. And it's the less is more approach. You said nothing out there among, but yourselves and you've turned it into a night out. I want to say something a little bit uh, controversial here, considering we're only a couple of days out from finishing the bloody thing. But uh, I think part of me already misses it, you know? Yeah. Misses being in that, just in that bubble. Absolutely. There's definitely post Hell Weekend Blues. Yeah. I'm kind of sitting in that. And I mean, we, we sat yesterday and we had breakfast, lunch, and tea in the one day. <laughs> and I think, Joe, I want everyone, oh, should, we get, mate, should we get the phone call out and get everyone, out, get, get everyone down here, you know? Yeah. I know. Just a quick special mention. Um, two quick mentions, of course. Uh, she was in my group, Holly, Holly B. Mm. Um, huge effort for her to come. She's, I think she was out in Braidwood, so she wasn't around. Uh, she didn't know the group that galvanized and got momentum. She was just, she wasn't part of those pre sessions, quite busy with her, with her roll back home. And for her to come in and to meet everyone on day one. And then to go in there and do those efforts, and I found so much pleasure in her uh, seeing her go, seeing her start, and then just go up like this, and just get strength from strength from strength to strength. And then at the end, I remember when we were holding up that bar right towards the end, I looked over to her, and she, her eye, her focus was so razor sharp; she wasn't dropping that thing, and she walks away gaining so much, not just physically, but socially as well how she really mingled well with the group and taylor the same they're ringing no uh, gets a call on oh. thursday and way. gets thrown straight into the deep end straight into hell week what a superhuman what Didn't an effort that was what an oh. effort that was she was superb you know smiley <laughs> <laughs> ah but it was uh let's yeah, call I a mean, big fella let's call the big let's fella. get him on the line let's get him on the line we're a bit late we have to make sure we got ap unless he made us do some burpees you know oh, right? could have been anything could have been anything. I mean, there's even a shortcut in the system. Here you go. Look at you there. Here he is. That was quite professional. Mate, you're live on the uh, special post-mortem presentation of uh, the Hell Weekend. You're joined by Ray and Nick, the Buckmeister, and Nicole B. We call Smiley. Uh, we're just talking about, uh, mate, we miss it. It's it's already been a couple of days. We miss the group. It's been like we said here. It's like we won a premiership. We we miss the people. We miss the group. Uh, all a little bit emotional. How are you feeling, mate? Uh, Post hell weekend. <laughs> I'm feeling good. Um, I'm just glad. He's, I'm just he's glad over it. <laughs> it. I'm not over it. I'm just glad we've got a big night on Friday night, obviously as well to to help celebrate and. Um, yeah, just just talking to the group on Monday, it's achieved everything and, and beyond what we first ever imagined. So uh, I've ticked every single box possible, and just to see the friendships come out of it, it's just, it just was a beautiful process, to, to be honest. Just quickly on that, there's still enough tickets for uh, the big session out there at Helene Club on Friday night. Where can oh, they get some tickets? <laughs> you can't. It's all sold um, out? <laughs> we're gone, yeah. So we've oh, literally just got rid of the last table just before you rang, actually. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> there you go. It's going to be a big night with plenty of characters. Probably more comfort foot than a London bakery, but uh, <laughs> other than that, it's going to be a fantastic night, mate. Well, uh, but just in all seriousness as well, I mean, this was a story from you and Jez. You had that. We've seen this grow from the beginning. I mean, we caught up before Christmas and to see it evolve into what it was now, it kind of took a mind of its own. Like yourself, Campe, personally, mate, like I think people have asked me about it and have asked me about yourself. And I, I say from the outside in, I think Campo's done a lot in his life. He's captain his, his town, he's played for his country, he's played for his state. But I reckon last weekend might have been the holiday of career so far, mate. Oh, definitely up there, uh, 100%. Just uh, to achieve what we did to get the charity on the map, we've been going since 2012, and um, not many people have known about it, but. You guys, I give it. I put it all down to the recruits that just um, embraced this challenge. They've got the word out. The family and friends and social media has definitely helped promote uh, what we do. And obviously, the money raised has just been extraordinary. We've been able to help so many causes out of this. Um, so it's yeah, definitely exciting. And I think only bigger and better things to come from it. Um, yeah, so hopefully we can get a team together next year who's as committed as what you guys were. Tez, it's Bucko, mate. Um, 
What was what surprised you most over the the last four months? Oh, there's, there's so many, uh, so many things that has surprised us. You know, things that we didn't think of is the camaraderie between the recruits. You guys didn't know each other uh, from a bar of soap before this started, and on Monday, sitting there, everyone you know excited. Fourteen of the twenty turned up um, to have lunch and ask two questions, which one was. Um, do you guys see it beneficial to do annually and, and to um, yeah, ask other people to participate? And, the, you know, everyone said 100%. And the other one was uh, to talk about who you bonded with um, throughout this process, both boys and the females, and <laughs> there was tears, mate. Mm. When Stocksy spoke, Darren Stocks, that is, when he spoke about wanting to be friends with everyone for life and, you know, mm. there was a bit of emotion behind it. It was just, you know, they're things that you just, don't think of um but yeah i absolutely loved it i've loved the whole process i've loved just watching you guys connect and uh, band together i got a bit jealous sometimes that i wasn't wasn't a recruit <laughs> I, was a, I was on the staff so i couldn't really join in as much but um yeah it's just been awesome to watch um looks like a few of us might be doing everest <laughs> at some point so you know there's plenty of memories i, I believe in life is to make the most of every opportunity to create memories, and you know, this these last four months has definitely, definitely done that. Um, Campo, it's just not that I've ever called you Campo before. <laughs> it's really uncomfortable for me. <laughs> uh, just wondering um, if you went back to site and got your GoPro that um, fell off when you capsized. <laughs> oh, mate, I can't believe that. It, it makes me a bit upset looking at the photos. I'm walking around with my GoPro on my head, so all the footage that I did take, which would have been exceptional footage, by the way, has been lost, and it's somewhere in the Queemian River. Um, yeah, so thanks for bringing that up, Nicole. Did you, did you happen to find my spoon out there as well that I asked I you? I did. Did it's you actually? on the back of Jess's ute. Is it a grey spoon and, and fork and yes. knife? Yes. <laughs> It's God, I'd be a te- God, I'd be a terrible recruit. I'm leaving stuff behind. We could talk about it on the Monday. We just had this massive event, and all the time could talk about was a damn spoon and knife. That's that- not what I could talk about. I asked you who the funniest recruit was, and you said it was me. <laughs> well, I think Nicole wins that hands down. Campo, one of the highlights of uh, the weekend as well was Sunday morning when we got to meet some of the kids that were involved in your programs, mate, and. It was an emotional time as well because uh, some of the some of the lovely kids there had some really lovely words to say. They were so inspired by seeing us out on that rope, and a couple of even said they want to be working in the SAS now. And and to yourself, it's really commendable what you're doing out there. But that must give you a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling uh, having to have those kids there to see it all take place. Oh, definitely. I think um, it was important to introduce you know the recruits and the kids. You know, the recruits were obviously raising money for this program. So, um, yeah, just to see the kids come along, they were inspired by what you guys did. And they they could see firsthand that, you know, it takes hard work to be able to, you know, travel Lara Pinta to get on the aeroplane, to go there, to trek, to get their hiking shoes and their mats and, and all the rest. That it's just It just doesn't come. It does take hard work to, you know, get these wonderful things in life. And like you said, at the end, there was two of them that left wanting to, to join the army. Um, I, I seen one of them on the side practicing the burpees that... Um, well, two of them jumped in the rope with us. You guys through. Two jumped and in the rope with us. They all jumped on the rope. Yeah. All of them. I think they all ended up jumping on the rope at some point, listening up the, the hill, uh, wanting to join in, and they wanted to keep going. They didn't want to stop at the bus and go home. They wanted to, to carry it all the way home. So, yeah, it was beautiful, a, I man. Think that was the icing on the cake, yeah. Um, another one from me, mate, and I think maybe to give you a bit of credit, uh, and I guess the, the wider public probably don't know this yet, but um, you and Jezza got flooded out on the Saturday night as well from your uh, nicely stationed off sleeving quarters inside your swag. Mate, and part of the mind games. <laughs> what, was, what was going through your head when word came through that, that your tent had turned into a river as well, mate? Yeah, do you know what? <laughs> because of the weather, because of uh, you know everyone going through the hard times, I wanted to... I was already had in the back of my mind I'd probably stay up with, with everyone. And it, wasn't, it was confirmed when Jezza went to uh, get changed. I think he was going into the tent to get changed. He'd come out and he goes, mate, your swag is about 20 mil underwater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but a GoPro might be sitting there too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I tell you what, how's your backyard? Jezza, your backyard took a flog on that weekend. Nah, it's, it's good. You know, it's all worth it. We, we had a barbecue year afterwards, but you know, the thing that I love is that 
that little patch of land at the back of my back deck is now nicely uh, flattened and I don't have to go out and weed it anymore because you guys are doing up burpees and yeah. picking up those stretches on it that it's nice and clear. I tell you what, every time you look at that backyard now, you look at it differently, won't you, after what went down that last weekend? <laughs> I'll never, I'll yeah. never stand there and not think that I'm gonna about to repeat the same trek for a fourth time. Like Pav comes out and say, "Welcome to the challenge." <laughs> 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 this is the medic. I tell you what, I don't want to see another sandbag again for the next five years, oh, or a stretcher. Yeah. All right, camper. Yeah, that, you know that only lasts. That only lasted one hour. Nick, the sandbag and stretcher. <laughs> that was the worst part. Yeah, did Jez end up going? Did Jez end up going to collect on the next day? Did he bring a knife with him that he said he was? <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, yeah. Jez has, you know, had some some bad news. Um, you know, the next day, which you know, our hearts and condolences go out to him and his family, which is you know, um, very very sad news. So. Um, yeah, Jez, Jez has been out of action, but you know we uh, wish him all the best, and you know, he was such a huge part of his challenge. Huge. Um, definitely couldn't have done it without him. So all my love goes to him and his family, and yeah, it was, it was very sad to top off such a, a great weekend. I think we echo exactly what you said there, mate. Also uh, mentioned to Scotty, Scotty Williams. He uh, he got us all into shape beforehand as well, and um, he was out there supporting on his Sunday too. So some good uh, human beings rolling around this, mate, and you're in. You're in good hands to have so many great humans supporting you, mate. Yeah, that's it. I can't thank everyone enough, obviously, starting from the recruits, um, just the way that everyone's bought in and, and, and taking this challenge on board. The staff, mate, we had the best of the best. Oh, the wow. <laughs> have represented our country, and I actually was kicking myself um, yesterday when I thought back about the you know my little presentation when, when we got the medals and all the rest, and... I didn't thank the guys enough. I think, you know, what they've done in their career, they've given us our freedom. They've gone and fought for yeah. us and uh, been on the battlefields and, and given us what we do have today. And we're lucky enough to have them, you know, put us through that, you know, 20 to 30 hour challenge. Um, so they were outstanding. They made the, the whole um, experience uh, worth it. And then obviously every single person who sponsored, donated, volunteered, over the last four months, like you said, Scotty Williams at CrossFit SFS, um, Lee Campbell, um, Pip's husband doing yoga. Even, Benny Edwards. So, Benny Edwards, Shane Tipper doing... Towel. So, As it pains me to say. That was, that was the <laughs> toughest session. <laughs> that was the toughest session, <laughs> mate. Talk about nearly throwing in a white towel. <laughs> I <on> know. Towel. <laughs> I've never seen Terry t- try so hard on an assault bike before. One round getting 51 cows and the next round mate, getting 23. An athlete, an athlete that was blowing. <laughs> what do you think of the rest of us? <laughs> Dead set recovering the stomach in. first. Did you say that again, Nicole? How many cows? You got 51 and then I think 23 yeah, the next no, round. No, second one, 51. That's what we like to do. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, all right, we'll let you go, Camper. You've got, you got a big uh, gala to organise. But you mentioned about these boys, uh, these men that uh, freed society. They didn't just free society. They freed us up as well. They've got rid of some of our bullshit stories that we told ourselves. And after that experience, uh, we've deleted a lot of that crap and we're kind of – we're changed people – and as I mentioned on that Facebook page, mate, you're not just changing the kids' lives, you've changed our lives as well, mate. So hang your head in pride, mate. You're a gift to the town, you're a gift to the community, and we're just all so grateful to be a part of the last four months, especially last weekend, mate. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks, guys, and thanks for your time. Talk to you soon. See you Friday. Have a beer on Friday. <laughs> Friday mate. Or, or, or a couple of dozen. Get that drinking arm ready, Pete. Probably, probably before uh, the event. <laughs> Who's, where are we starting? <laughs> There he is, the boss, Mr. TC. Um, I think the boy was getting a bit emotional there, so he had to cut it short. But uh, why not? He deserves to be. It, it was How good was the last couple of months? It's going to be hard to bounce back into reality now from that, isn't it? Mate, it's like we said, we've got to find a way to go back to back. Absolutely. Anything else left? Nicole, Smiley? What's, what's your biggest takeaway? Let's, let's end with that. What's your biggest takeaway? Who's the Nicole post Hill Weekend now? I don't know. I feel like it's. I actually haven't fully comprehended the thirty hours still that processing. have been. Um, I think it's uh, still a lot of reflecting I have to do on the weekend. I think um, there's definitely some people there that I really like, look up to, and want to take some things as I move forward in life. You know how Pip's so stoic. Mm. You know how Holly's so brave, or like you know welcoming all these things. I want to move forward and be like, oh, I want to be more like that. And you know, I'll never forget um, Alan Tung when he said. You know, think about how you want people to remember you. And, you know, those two... 
you were the life of that party. And that's why we wanted you tonight. That's why we, we worked hard to get you here after you tried to bail. Oh, I don't know if I was alive for the party. I think it makes me reflect and be like, maybe I need to not laugh in serious moments so nah, much. Nah, keep you it coming. I love it. I love don't it. Don't ever lose that. Like yeah. the first, probably what, 30 minutes in, the first time they said recruit speak or like yell out. And I was like, what was it? Lower, raise, lower, raise. And they're like, louder. And I was like, Raise. Oh, and I was like, laughing. You're like, making them laugh too. And they're like, you think this is funny? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> you can put energy into lifting that bar into laughing. Oh, it was bound to happen. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Like, there's just so much. I mean, even if we just strip it back from not even a recruit perspective, but not being on my phone for 30 hours oh, yeah. and enjoying nature for what it was and the moment for what it was, that is done bounds for me in my life. I'm like, you know, I'd love to like do that more often because I'm stuck to my phone all the time. Yeah, so, you're telling me. I yeah. mean, mommy, maybe not 30 hours of not knowing what was coming next. And always this fear of like the unknown, but the rest, you know, loved it. Bucko, we'll get you out on your next hike, Nicole. <laughs> uh, biggest thing for me, mate, the people, hundred percent. Just met some phenomenal people over the last four months. Like like Tezza just said, then you know, probably barring yourself, didn't know anyone from a bar of soap. Mm. And I've genuinely got people there that are friends for life now. Yeah, people that I'll cross the road for, you know, just to give them a hug. What about in regards to some you know, in regards to maybe your, in your inner world that might have shifted if, um, you if you're keen to share? Yeah, mate, I'm probably still processing some of that to be honest mm. with you. Yeah, um, but we did go to some. I think I think I I went to some places I've probably not been before. Mm. You know, and I've been in some pretty tough, you know, pretty tough situations out in the bush over the years. Yeah. Um, but this tested me more than any of that, I think. Yeah. I know it was just one night, one night in the rain, which really doesn't sound that bad, but it was tough. Like we had, there was plenty of adversity there. The, the not knowing, like you say, Nicole, not knowing what's coming. The unknown. The unknown, that, that really, really plays on your mind and you can never relax. Mm. Um, you know, you, you got to look out for the people around you. you. You're soaking wet. I think... I think it's probably taught me to be a lot more selfless. Yeah. You know, they really drilled that teamwork thing home. Um, getting, rid of the, getting rid of the me out of the way. Getting rid of the me, yeah. that's exactly right. And using the we, that's something that I'm really going to take forward, I think. Yeah. Um, because that's what that's what we are, you know, as a society and as a community. We should be looking out for each other. 100%. Just those bullshit stories you tell yourself, I've just totally thrown them out. That's that's why we're forever grateful for that opportunity, and they just laugh it off like, yeah, no worries, you had yeah. a good time over the weekend. But that was so profound what we learnt in that thirty hours. And one thing I noticed too, when we went, when we we're back at Campo's place, and I said, let's go take a photo, we all just went chung, and that discipline had yeah. already had an effect, even yeah. even when we're off the off the record, you know. Yeah. I um, oh, I just forgot what I was going to say. Oh, one thing that I from the weekend was that mental boundary, as you were saying. Mm. But with especially with that torsion bar um, and holding it, because that's what we use for punishment, obviously, and holding it out at 90, is it 90 degrees or 45 mm. degrees? 90, 90 oh. degrees. We went both a few <laughs> times. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and I would consider myself, I was like, yep, I've, I go to the gym, like I'm strong. This six kilo bar is not going to beat me. But 20 seconds into holding it 90 degrees, it beats me. And all it is after that 20 seconds is is your mental strength because if your muscles were weak they would just it would just drop the bar right so yeah. the rest is what you can do mentally and you know being able to put push through those boundaries and it's just crazy what we can do so. did you find yourself getting more energized as it went on yeah, yeah that was my experience i think so yeah well when they said yeah. go for a third time i was like all right come at me then yeah. I, I know <laughs> like i was like, yeah. <laughs> but i think that just goes to show the science of that is you keep finding more, and it opens up another door, yeah. another empty room of energy, and that's what we're doing. We like we block ourselves from our own bullshit. We were nearly nearly cracked an hour. Gee, that was supposed to be twenty minutes, but anyway, <laughs> let's go grab a schooner, eh? <laughs> See you, good mate. Let's do it. See you. <laughs>